see how you want to play it? Hey, Apple. Why didn't you send one to him, huh? We're going to send an iPhone to everyone on the planet. But not him. 20 pages worth of video! Not one for me, though. No. Not he yet. might say what he's thinking. He might do something drastic. We can't have that! We're talking about billions of dollars! Trillions! Maybe it's because I speak my mind. Well, guess what, Tim? I bought my own! I give you the right kind of advice. I get to say what I want now. I bought this like you bought this. Don't send one to him! It could be a disaster! What might he do? What might he say? Well, since Tim didn't get me these phones, let's talk about who did. The Brent, of course. With a new grip case? How did, what was, how did it, link in the description, go check it out. So the iPhone 10 is obviously a very exciting device and you know I had to bring you my perspective. I've noticed this phone popping up all over the web days before release. This is the first launch where Apple sent this device out hundreds of pages of results for iPhone 10 unboxing videos in advance of the actual retail release. Well, I don't know if you've been following me on Twitter, but you probably noticed that I didn't have one. These were purchased in a store just like they would be for any regular customer in the past. I've made videos about Apple products, maybe less than favorable. Go back far enough, you probably remember when I bent an iPhone. That video there, it wasn't even motivated by destruction at the time. A family member had the phone bend in their pocket while they were snowboarding, and I was like, let me see if this is real. I went on Twitter, and I was just having a bit of fun. I tweeted at Tim Cook. I was like, listen, if you send me a phone, I'll give some money to charity. My Twitter, just in general, before I even made that tweet, where is your iPhone? phone 10 video are they trying to avoid him is there something that he did apple did reach out to me i'll probably follow up with that next week i'll see what they have to say going about procuring them in this fashion it kind of frees me in a certain sense as far as what i feel motivated to say about them i got them the same way that you would the same way a customer would now that isn't always the case plenty of these devices are coming early and they're coming as a point of privilege in a way it kind Kind of like tints what you're gonna say about it because you feel so great so special to have it in front of you in the first place I've participated in that to a great degree how can I not when I eventually see this product look at it differently than if I had have had that same privilege all that said this is a real change from the stuff that they had been making previously I'm genuinely interested in examining this device one of them here is the silver the other one is the space gray no stick look at that 
and there it is. It's definitely nice looking. You can't take that away from it. Camera module on the back, controversial for a moment, but it seems like people have gotten used to it. One advantage of going with the lighter model is that fingerprints are gonna show up less. The power brick, I get it. This is super portable and that's nice. The phone does support quick charge. The competitors in the phone segment, they've got the quick charge power bricks in the box. Lightning ear pods, an adapter, old school headphones, lightning cable. I think it's time to say goodbye to this connector and to bring type C to the iPhone. Of course, this notch at the top is prominent. I have to admit, it's kind of an awkward implementation. I'm a little bit apprehensive here, you know, the face, putting it in the database here. They say that they're, they're protecting it. As far as I know, this is the first mainstream device to completely forego the fingerprint reader in exchange for this face ID. You know, if you have a massive beard, you go shave it and the next day, face ID is like, who's this man? Not gonna be an issue for me. This face hasn't been shaven since I was 12. If I go up, there you go. Ooh, it worked there this time. You gotta have a bit of an angle on it. So now it's telling me about the True Tone display. It attempts to automatically adapt the display to the surrounding lighting conditions. Now, if I touch this area here, it shows me the display without the True Tone setting. It's a little more yellow when the True Tone is enabled. Welcome to iPhone. Okay, here we go. Kaboom. Is that really so bad? Comparative to a home button? I don't know. If I wanna go into multitasking, I just, I'm gonna lift up and then kaboom. Now, as far as reaching the top corner here, it's not as convenient as at the bottom. Got a trick for you. TLD John in the house. All right, everybody say hello. If this man doesn't deserve your thumb, then who does? Jack does. Am I right? Give him no, the tip. I agree, like this sucks. From like, up there. Yeah, general, accessibility, reachability. What a word. Oh man, that is weird. Down, down. Oh man, I, I don't know. The second down is easy. The first one. Yeah, you gotta get used to it for sure. You've been using this phone. You're one of the you're one of the special people. Like anyone who says that they don't see the notch with video, don't believe them. Ah uh, It's the same problem, right? Yeah, you got a much smaller screen than you thought you had. Oh, no, no way. You chop off 2D's hairdo and he works on that thing. Now the notch stands out quite a bit more. Right. I'm tapped out. What do you think though? Like brightness and everything. I wouldn't call the display stand out to me. It looks like other OLED displays. You'd be nitpicking to pick one specifically over the other. Samsung makes the display on the iPhone 10. You have to wonder though. You're Samsung, you make the displays. Who yeah. gets the A list? Who gets the B? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I think either way, both look super bright and super good. They do. Thumbs up for John. Right, let's listen to the speaker on this thing. Okay. Above average? It's not blowing me away, but it's getting the job done. Let me just remind you, okay? And up until this phone, I never heard a phone that sounds like that. Tough comparison. All right, what about the camera? My expectations here are pretty high. Snaps very quickly. Hey, that is a huge attribute of these phones. That's a fast shutter. Fairly nice. There's nothing digital about that zoom there. You're switching over to the other lens. And that's a nice image as well. And that's very detailed. We have some new options for video now. The default for video recording 1080p 30 FPS, we can take that all the way up to 4K 60 FPS. 4K 60 frames per second. There you, hi Jack. How are you, you're doing? Okay. Good to see you too. This portrait mode, natural light. That's a good selfie. These cameras are awesome. Studio light, contour, stage light. This is all about the drama. Kind of cool, you get this dramatic effect. All right, so key takeaways for me here, the device feels high quality. The notch thing, not so great for video. The first OLED screen on an iPhone. The facial recognition thing is not exactly something that I can test extensively in a video like this. Here, it seems to be getting me every time. I wish there was a way that they could have still included a fingerprint scanner if they found a way to get Touch ID into the button here along 
along with Face ID as an option. If you're looking for the best camera in the game, probably look in here, you're probably looking at the Pixel recently. Yes, it's a great device, but I've really been sitting here considering just how great devices have gotten in general. There are good phones available now for a lot less money than what you were expected to pay even a year ago. Are the improvements I might see with this device worth the price of admission? How much better are any of these things? They're all getting very good, and I'm not so sure that you need a $1,000 plus device. You might be better off saving that extra cash and getting something that's 90% of the way there and doing something else with your 500 bucks. Of course, that decision is going to be yours. It's hard to take a device that's new and shiny and tell you guys what to do. Everybody's needs are different. You guys saw the intro. I talked a little bit about the backstory regarding myself getting my hands on this phone to begin with. Know that my intent is to try to guide you towards what would be best for you. Because the question of best in general isn't really a thing that can be answered. The best device for you is not necessarily the best device for someone else, but the beauty of the situation right now is that there are so many best devices. So on that note, why don't you guys drop a comment down below and let me know which is your best device?